شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا ما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم شر الامور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة كل بدعة ضلالة كل ضلالة في النار tonight inshallah uh, we talk about bab al-ju'ala bab al-ju'ala wa hi an yaqulu man radda luqtati aw dallati aw bana li hadha al-ha'it fa lahu kadha fa man fa'ala dhalika istahaqqa al-ju'la lima rawa abu sa'id anna qawman ludiga rajulun fa atahu ashab rasul allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa qalu hal fikum min raq qalu la hatta taj'alu lana shay'an fa ja'alu lahum qati'an min al-ghanam فجعل رجل منهم يقرأ بفاتحة الكتاب ويرقي ويتفل حتى برأ فأخذوا الغنم وسألوا عن ذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال وما يدريكم أنها رقيا خذوا واضربوا لي معكم بسهم ولو التقط اللقطة قبل أن يبلغه الجعل, يبلغه الجعل لم يستحق الجعالة باب الجعالة and this is the chapter of reward and that is to make a reward for certain action and such transaction is an independent transaction from any other transaction in Islam and it's similar to uh, to the transaction of al-ijara and that is the transaction of hiring someone to do a certain job but there are few differences as we will go along inshallah we will discuss them and we will understand the difference between a reward and between uh, uh, a pay yani when you pay someone when you hire someone to do some work for you wal ju'alatu bi tathlith al jin yani yuqalu ju'ala wa yuqalu ja'ala wa yuqalu ji'ala wal mashhur al ja'ala and that is uh, the reward qul mu'allif rahimahullah باب الجعالة وهي الجعالة وهي أن يقول من رد لقطتي أو ضالتي أو بنى لي هذا الحاط فله كذا يقول ابن ابن قدامة رحمه الله the chapter of the reward and it's like someone tells someone whoever finds for me whatever I lost يعني he lost something someone lost something so he'll announce or he'll tell specific person or he will tell a group of people whoever find what I lost then I will give him such and such or to say whoever does this work for me I will give him such and such and we will see the difference between this and hiring someone فالجعالة مأخوذة ومشتقة من الجعل والجعل بمعنى الإيجاب والجعل والجعل والجعالة والجعيلة هي ما يعطاه الإنسان على أمر يفعل الجعالة or الجعل the origin of the word is the action of giving someone something for something he has done to give someone or to reward someone a certain thing for an action he has he has fulfilled أما تعريفها الصلاحا the meaning in شريعة and the meaning that we are about to discuss أن يجعل جائز التصرف شيئا معلوما أو مجهولا لمن يعمل له عملا معلوما أو مجهولا مدة معلومة أو مجهولة. So that is the definition of الجعالة in what aspect or what we are about to to talk about. And that is أن يجعل جائز التصرف. جائز التصرف يعني الحكيم الرشيد البالغ العاقل. يعني when you ask someone to do this thing for you, you have to ask someone. Who fulfilled the conditions that makes him qualified to fulfill the task? So you don't come to a kid to ask him to do that. Such tran transaction will be invalid. You do not come to someone who is insane or crazy. Such transaction will be invalid. So you have to come to someone aqil, rashid, wise, sane, 
uh, knows what he's doing, okay? Not crazy. So that is the first thing that you have to ask. To ask him shay'an ma'luman aw majhulan. To ask him to do something specific or something unspecific. To do something well known or something that is not clear. Something very obvious or something ambiguous. So that is where the issue or the, one of the differences comes between this transaction, jahala, and the transaction of lijar. Because lijar got to be something specific. Yeah, and when you hire someone, you tell him, I want you to do this. With al-jahala or with this, it's different. And when I give example, it will become more clear. Shay'an ma'luman aw majhulan, yani iwad. Yani, in other words, you're going to ask him to do this specific thing or not specific, okay? To do specific tasks or not specific for specific pay or not specific. Yani you can determine the pay or you don't have to determine it. Can be determined later or you can give him whatever comes up, all right? So it doesn't have to, it's not required that you tell him exactly what you're going to reward him from the beginning, okay? Yani you, we'll give the example at the end of the, of the definition, inshallah. Uh, لمن يعمل يعمل له عملا معلوما أو مجهولا. and we already came across all these. so the point is in the transaction of الجعالة أو الجعالة everything can be known from the beginning or it doesn't have to. so the point is it doesn't have to. whereas in الإجارة it has to. يعني when you hire someone to do some hire someone because we will see the difference. But when you hire someone to do a specific task, يعني you, tell, you bring someone, a contractor, you tell him, build me an apartment. So you are hiring him, okay? You are hiring him. So this transaction, you have to agree on the details from the beginning. What you want him to build, how much you're going to pay him, how, much he gonna pay, he, how, how long it's going to take him. All these conditions need to be met. Jaala, everything doesn't have to be like that. The rewarding process, I mean, when you tell someone, whoever finds, for example, whoever finds, let's say you lost your wallet, and that is uh, an example. If you lost your wallet and you, bring, you say, or you ask someone or a group of people or you announce, you say, whoever finds my wallet, then I will reward him. So here, the task itself is known, and that's finding the wallet. But the details of the action are not. How are we going to look for it? So everyone going to look for it in a different way. Some people might make a, a flyer and post it some, here and there. Some people might uh, call their friends. Some people, whatever the situation. So the specifics of the action is unknown. Also the reward is unknown. And you tell him, I, I give you a reward. Something will make you happy. But find it. He can do that. Or the third part is you don't know how long it's going to take. Whoever finds it. Sometimes it might take a few hours, might take a minute, might take two days or a month. So as you see, all these conditions are not specific. And that's what makes it different than, than the job. <clears throat> So if we if we look at the يعني, uh, someone might say, but here if if you're not being specific, then there is gharar. And we already talked about al gharar. Al gharar means risk. Means Islam does not allow to enter into a transaction where you don't know a lot of things about it. Okay? Yani something someone tells you just come in as a partner and we're going to give you this and that. You really don't know. We're going to make you happy. Such things are not allowed. Why? Because you might end up not meeting, the, they might end up not meeting your expectations. So in, that, in such transactions, usually the gharar is rejected and that is the risk. But in this transaction, you see a lot of things, a lot of factors are unknown. A lot of things are unknown. But that means there is gharar, there is risk. And if someone might go and do a lot of work searching for something and then at the end you give him a dollar. 
So there is risk, okay? I mean, it might be that's the job, that's what he usually do. So it's very important. Such gharar and such risk is overlooked because at the end of the, of the transaction, it's usually minute. It's usually overlooked. So that is not an issue as well as jahala. So the differences between jahala and ijar. Uh, jahala لا يشترط لصحتها العلم بالعمل المجعل عليه. In the in the jahal in this transaction, يعني the rewarding, you don't know, you don't have to know the specifics. But in the ijara, as we already said, you have to know the details and the specifics. The second is لا يشترط في الجعالة معرفة مدة العمل. You don't know. You not. You don't have to know how long it's gonna take. As we already gave the example. يعني when I tell you I reward you if you find my wallet, you don't know exactly how it's gonna take. We're in the ijara. You have to specify. The third, على that the transaction and the type of the transaction of الجعالة is جائز, but الإجارة is لازم. يعني if I if you come to me and you say I'll reward you if you find my wallet then five minutes later ten minutes later you call me you say you know what don't look for it I changed my mind I'm not going to reward it. it's not worth it that is permissible in this transaction but in ijara it's not ijara عقدٌ لازم this عقد is is جائز and vice versa if I come to you and say, if you find my wallet or you do this specific work for me, I will reward you and you accept. You can call me five minutes later or a day later, two days later, tell me, you know what, I don't think I will do it or I will be able to do it. That is in jahal and the rewarding process. But in the, in the, in the ijara and when you hire someone and pay someone, it's a different story. Uh, the fourth, uh, the, the rent or whatever you're going to compensate. The compensation is not required to be known in Jaala. I reward you, just find it. But in Lijara, you have to be specific what you're going to what you're going to pay them. Uh, okay. So these are some of the of the differences. <coughs> الأصل, where this Transaction comes. Where is what is the Sharia? Yani, how is it permissible? What is your dalil? First dalil is قول الله تعالى إن سورة يوسف ولمن جاء به حمل بعير وأنا به زعيم. الله سبحانه وتعالى when he talks about the story of Yusuf عليه السلام and he announces when the when يعني he he plotted to get his brother in his custody and you all know the the glass of the king went missing. And he made an announcement that it was missing, and whoever finds it, then فله حملو حملو بعير. And he will be rewarded carriage, whatever a camel can carry of food. So that is the deli. يعني who finds the cup or who who finds the glass of the king, we will reward him. X Y Z. Okay. So this is a deli for the jala. This is a deli for the jala. This is not rent because you're not specifying who gonna do it, which is another difference between lijar and jahal. Jahala, you can announce amongst thousand people. Whoever finds this, then we will reward him. Whoever, but with the with the rent or not the rent with the lijara, yani when you hire someone to do certain work, contracting someone, you have to specify him. And you cannot come to a hundred contractors and say. Whoever builds this building for me, I'll give it. And then they're all going to start building for you. All right? So very, very important. So here, whoever they announce, whoever finds it, then we will reward him. So this is the deal from, from the Quran. Also in the hadith that uh, Ibn Qudama, rahimahullah, mentions in the... Uh, what time, Aisha? 7.45. Ibn uh, Qudama mentioned in the beginning, and that is group of the Sahaba were traveling and they came to, to a town 
they asked for some uh, hospitality and they were rejected. And hospitality in Islam is important and its first night is a must. Any yani hospitality of the first night is wajib. And when we say wajib, yani you got no choice. Yani you, you're sinful if you, if you don't do it. And usually when we say daif or the guest, usually someone comes out of town. But people who visit each other from the same town called zawar or za'ir. Okay? But a guest, someone who comes from out of town, for example, and hits to you and expect your uh, hospitality, the first day or the first night is a must. Yani you don't have choice. Okay? And the, the three nights, mustahab. Yani the second and the, the, the third is, is recommended. After that, it's not. And this is, it was a shame and still a shameful act if someone expect your hospitality and you don't, you don't host them. All right? But just to mention that. So this group of Sahaba were uh, traveling and uh, they came to a town and they expect hospitality. So they, re they denied them. Okay? They denied them, the, t the people. It happened that the, the, uh, the leader of that town got stung by, uh, by a snake. And uh, so they came to the, the Sahaba and they asked him, they asked them if they had someone who can uh, cure him, yani a doctor amongst them, a Raqi. So, so the Sahaba said, yani we do have, but what you going to reward us for? Yani you, you just denied us hospitality. Most probably if they, if they were generous with them and honored them, they would have done it for free. So they said, yeah, we, we'll do it if you, what you're going to pay us. So they told him, we'll give you a uh, few sheep or wh whatever they agreed on. Okay, yeah, any, some ghanim. <coughs> so uh, the Sahabi went and he recited, all he recited was al Fatiha. And Fatiha is, is a great cure for a lot of diseases. Okay, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah says that wherever he went to Hajj, Every time he'll get sick, he'll get some zamzam and read al-Fatiha. Wa alaykum as Read some Fatiha on it and drink it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cure him uh, from it. فَجَعَلُوا لَهُمْ قَطِيعَ شِيَاهَ فَجَعَلَ هَذَا الْقَارِئِ يَقْرَأْ بِأُمِّ الْقُرْآنِ يعني الفاتحة فَجَعَلَ يَقْرَأْ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَيَتْفُلْ وَيَتْفُلْ يعني he will read one ayah, one verse and then we'll spit on this person. But spitting tefil, it's spitting without the, the moisture, without saliva. So it's like the air, blowing the air on him. So he will read, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, and then he will go like that on him. And you know the hadith also in the salah, the, the shaytan, uh, what's his name? The shaytan who comes to you in the salah. That's not my question. <laughs> Naam? What's was? With the law? Khansab. Naam? Mm-hmm. Mingala. Mashallah. All right? And the Prophet teaches us when, when the shaitan stop playing in your head when you're praying, you can yani it for, you, on your left side three times, and this is a shaitan who comes to, to, to distract you. So that's what he used to do. He read one ayah and blow on that person. So after he finished the Fatiha, this man stood up as if he was never hurt. Okay? So now they're in doubt. And he was this act, getting paid for this is permissible. So they decided they're not going to split the, the sheep until they ask the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when they returned to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so he said, وَمَا يُدْرِيكُمْ أَنَّهَا رُقِيَةً يعني how you know this was Ruqya. And then he saw Sallam to approve their action, وَعَلَيْكُمْ السَّلَامُ He said, يعني give me a share of what you got. All right, to approve their action. Give me a share of the sheep. So this, the lead from the Sunnah that it's okay in, the, in certain Yani the ulama deduced from this hadith that it's okay to get paid for shifa. Okay? But not for the cure. What's the difference? 
يعني a doctor if you go to a doctor and uh, uh, you tell him uh, I reward you for treating my, my son beside his pain such act is not permissible if this doctor has specific because you're hiring him to do the service so you have to uh, clarify the amount from the beginning but if you come to him and you say if you cure my son then I will pay you whatever I reward you or ten thousand dollars now it's a jahala but if you tell him do your job and I reward you it's not because his job can cure and cannot but if you tell him you cure my son and you do your best and this is to encourage him to do his best and I will give you ten thousand dollars that is fine but you cannot tell him do your job and I'll give you ten thousand dollars okay because he has specific or not ten thousand I, I will reward you do your job and I'll reward you you cannot do that because here you're hiring him to do you a service so you have to agree on the amount but if you make it a contract of jahala and that is rewarding then you tell him you cure my son I'll pay you I reward you it becomes permissible all right so that is the, the distinction that's why uh, the ulama said it's okay to have jahala or rewarding ala shifa la ala al-ilaj and from this hadith ala shifa la ala on the cure not on the treatment okay on the cure not on the treatment again just to give you the example again you come to Raqi someone who recites someone who reads Quran on, on people to cure them so you tell him do it yani read Quran and I reward you you can do it but you tell him you read Quran and if he gets cured I will reward you that's okay because now the second phrase was Ja'ala the first was Ijara so in the Ijara you should specify the pay Got it? in Ja'ala you also can specify you tell him you, tr you cure my son, I'll give you $10,000. That's okay as well. Is that jahala or ijara? Jahala. Because you do the ijara on the treatment. Jahala on the cure. So from the previous hadith, they understood it's okay to make a reward for the cure. Yani if you cure him, I'll reward you not for the treatment okay not for not for the the treatment <clears throat> also like another way to understand it if, uh, if you tell if you put ijara uh, on a doctor for example and you tell him yeah and in the sense I'll pay you if you cure him that is jahala. There is uh, unclear agreement because he can cure him, or he might not. Okay, so he can, he should not accept. But if you tell him I reward you, it's completely different. Because if you come to a doctor and you tell him, if you cure him, I'll I reward you. That still you're obligated to pay him for his service because the cure can happen or it can't so there is jahala there is some ignorance here in the picture but if you tell him if you cure him over you what you usually get paid I will reward you a thousand dollars that is okay but if you tell him if you cure him I reward you okay that is fine but if we're gonna look at it as ijara it's not because there is jahala, because the cure might happen and might not, might not happen.
So قبل الجمهور العلماء جعل عقد جائز as we already said جعل عقد جائز يعني it's a permissible contract meaning that either party can break out of it without any consequence that is the meaning of عقد جائز say I changed my mind two days later whatever let's see some of the contemporary uh, uh, transactions that are similar to what we're talking about uh, all these uh, competitions that take place can I get involved with them yeah, I mean, educational competition uh, who wants to be the millionaire all these stuff like that Okay. of course the first thing as long as there is no munkar uh, then we move to the next part Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you go to one of those competitions and you have to, to mix with women and you have to go drinking parties and they have parties and mixing and mingling and all that of course that is different issue but let's say they're going to bring you put you in that chair and ask you the questions you win, you win, you don't win, you leave let's assume that it. it's permissible as long as there is no iwab to get in yani there is no participating fee alright so the competition itself applies to al-ja'ala yani you get it, you play with us if you win, we'll reward you that is jahal. But if they say you play with us, yani now you say that's it. The brother in the masjid who's giving the lecture said playing lottery is okay. Because you play with us, if you win you you we give you. No, I already said there is no iwab, yani without requiring you to pay. So if they tell you for example, these are coupons going to give you a coupon, your number matches, right? Match the uh, draw, you win a million dollars. As long as you don't have to pay for that coupon. It's not, then it's not lottery. But if they tell you, dude, all you're going you're gonna to pay is a dollar. You're going to win a million dollars in. And everyone who buys those lottery tickets thinks he's going to win the million. All right? then it becomes how apply to that similar to this is when you when they have competitions on TV for example or radio then you have to call usually the call will cost money doesn't it like one eight one nine hundred one seven hundred whatever the numbers are or put texting you put they charge you for that that is not permissible as well all right stuff like that if there is no uh, pay then you are fine but someone goes to uh, yani you, need, you buy something buying that will result in them them giving you a coupon because they're gonna have a draw for example you go buy uh, I don't know uh, microwave once you open the microwave, they have a coupon with a number. They tell you go and log on the internet on our website and put this number. Maybe you want anything, something. Is that from? Uh huh. Okay. Okay. We have a question right now. We need to uh, to. Uh, okay. That is one one. Con there are two conditions need to be met. One, the merchandise that you bought should not be overpriced because there is a coupon. And the coupon has to be free. Got it? That's one. And if the microwave is $100, you're going to buy it for $100. But you're not buying it for $120 because there's a coupon. Second condition, you need the microwave. That means you're not buying it for the coupon. All right? Very important. A lot of people will do that. Will buy things they don't need for that. So in other words, you paid for that with the coupon. Good question. Yeah. Do you pay for it? 
So they are, they're charging you for the service because they're, they're doing the paperwork for you. something like you're saying it comes along the package okay. you have text messaging yes. so you whether you text or not you're being charged yes. but not by the people who, who are then that is fine okay. even okay. some of the ulama uh, said if the amount is so small even if it's being charged by the people it's overlooked but we say it's a doubtful thing so as long as it's not the people that who are charging you then that is not as long as it's not a condition to become part of the competition, to pay, that is what we are talking, the restriction we're talking, talking about. Okay. Uh, any, when we talk about competitions, any competition, general competitions, as long as you don't have to pay to become a com competitor in it, then it's overlooked and it's, it's permissible. Some transactions where a country will give a contract to, to a company, and tell them, for example, uh, you search for, for oil for us. Yeah, and here's the desert or here's the land, look for oil. If you find oil, we'll give you this amount of money. If you find oil, we'll give you one-tenth of it. For example, this is Ja'ala, okay? This is what we're talking about. So if they don't find, they don't get paid, okay? That is another transaction. Uh, also, one of the transactions, you tell someone, if you sell me yeah, and you have a car for sale, you tell him, if you sell it for me, I'll give you a hundred bucks. If you sell it for me, I'll give you one, one tenth of what you get. All right? That is also tra rewarding transactions. Because if he doesn't sell it, how much does he get? Nothing. Okay? Uh, uh, getting, uh, you know, some companies, what, what they call them, uh, when people owe you checks and then you hire these companies. Collection, collection agency, yeah. Collection agencies, uh, you tell them, here's checks my clients gave me and they're, they bounce for $100,000. Collect as much as you can and you get 10% or you get 50% or whatever. That is ja'ala. And that is permissible in this, in this aspect. Yeah. Uh, rewards uh, the like uh, security organization will, or the government will put a reward. Whoever finds this person will reward him $10,000, $100,000, $1,000,000, $10,000,000, whatever it is. And good luck looking for this person because he doesn't even exist. But the point is, uh, that is also this from this. So if you find, first, it's general for everyone. Second, if you find it, you get paid. If you don't find it, you don't, you don't get it. All right? So these are the, some of the, the contemporary uh, transactions. Uh, some of the rules. Now we said, in Ja'ala, you can tell someone, if you, you lost your wallet, so you can tell him, if you find my wallet, I reward you. So he goes, he does what he's supposed to do, he finds the wallet, he brings it to you, he tells you, sir, here's your wallet. 
Now what you're going to give me? So you pull a dollar out of your pocket and you give him a dollar. So now there's a dispute. And a dollar. And if, for example, it took me a month to find it. Now you give me a dollar. So if there is a dispute in liwab, yani dispute on what you're rewarding in amil okay? Uh, or the person you, you add or you announce, the person who decided to do the job, then the solution for this is Ujratul Mathal or Al Mithl. Yani, we're gonna look if you would hire someone to do what he did. And you hire a specific person, you tell him, I want you to search for my wallet, I lost it here and there, do whatever you need to do. He'll tell you, okay, my charges will be this, and you agree. So we look how much a person, how much you would pay a person to do the same thing that this person did under Ja'ala transaction, right? As a consequence, that's what you're required to pay. Now, how do we know that? What determines how much usually get, someone get paid for such job? Le'urf. Yeah, I need a custom, what people are accustomed to. All right? Yeah, and someone, you tell someone, if you sell this car for me, I'll give you, I reward you. Then when he sells it, he comes back, you give him $10. Of course, he's going to be upset. So we see the urf, we ask few people, how much usually, if someone sells, you, sells a car for you, how much you pay him? Someone will say 5%, 10%, you know, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. So it depends. So it depends on an area, how much the people are accustomed to, and that is what decide them. Uh, also from the ahkam and the rulings that related أن من عمل لغيره عملا بغير جعل ولا إذن فإنه لا يستحق عليه عوضا لألا يلزم الإنسان بما لم يلتزم به وبما لم تطب به نفسه If someone decide to do something on your behalf or something he knows you want him to do but you never asked يعني you lost your wallet but you don't think it's worth it what's in it so you never said, or you never announced, whoever finds it, or you went to a specific, whatever the situation is, and someone decides, you know what, I'm going to search for it, I'm going to look for it, so he can give me some money, or reward me. So he goes, he does everything he has to do, he finds it, he brings it to you. The ruling is, you're not required to give him anything. All right? You're not required. Because most probably you're going to give him something that you don't feel like giving if you're going to give him. And if you don't give him, it's going to be hard feeling in him. So you, but he needs to know that you are not required to give him anything. All right? But you should give him out of generosity, out of muru'ah, out of shaham, out of karama, yani, makarim al akhlaq. All right? Uh, someone, yani, comes, you, you're leaving your office, and you find someone standing there who just cleaned your, your car. And he washed your car for you and all that. So, thank you very much. You get in your car, you're about to leave. So he comes to the window, he tells me, she tells you, you're not going to pay me. Right? You never ask him to do that. He volunteered. I mean, you, get, you, you, should, you, you might have to give him out of generosity, but by the Sharia, you are not required. All right? You're not required. There are two exceptions in, to this rule. And that is if someone does something, Without you asking him to do, he doesn't get a reward in general. But two exceptions. One of those, irja'ul abd al-abiq. Yani, when they used to have slaves, if a slave runs away, you find him, you know he belongs to so and so, you catch him, and you bring him back, then you get rewarded for that, and he should reward you. There is hadith, yani, weak hadith, but Umar and Ali and uh, some of Abin Abbas used to give fatawa that you give the person who brings the Abd al-Abiq a dinar. One dinar, okay? One dinar or 12, 12 dirhams. So Ibn Qudama said, this is a jama'ah. Yani this is the consensus of the ulama, because there is no different opinions. The second, تَخْلِيصُ مَتَاعِ غَيْرِهِ مِنْ هَلَكَةٍ كَغَرْقٍ أَوْ the other situation, the other exception to the rule, if someone does something without you asking him that you are required to reward him, and he can take you to court if you don't pay him, is you pass and you find a house burning. The people away, the house burning, you jump in the house, you save whatever you can save. 
or you find someone drowning or like luggage drowning, <clears throat> flooding, all that, and you save whatever you save. You get a computer, you get a laptop here, you get a fridge here, whatever the situation is, huh? And then when, he, when it's done, you come to the owner and you tell him, look, I saved this for you. Someone might say, I did not ask you to save it for me. I'm not going to pay you. That is the fee here. This is, excuse my language, an idiot. Of course he wanted to save, but he doesn't want to pay. You can, according to Islam, you can take him to the Qadi and to the court, and he will compensate you for that, for that service. All right? So in certain situations like that, some emergency, some uh, disaster, if you can save whatever for someone, that you know for sure, if you would not interfere, it will, and it will vanish. Then you will be, you should be compensated for that. Uh, some people, and he, can I uh, make jaala for someone to, for his intercession? Yeah, and he, you come to someone uh, who has a name, reputation, knows a lot of people. And you tell him, uh, if you go to so-and-so organization or government uh, uh, department or whatever, and you intercede for me for a job, huh, then I'll reward you. I'll give you this and that. This is not permissible. All right? This is not permissible. Now, if someone, because of his name, intercede for you, you need to get a job, because he knows the people and all that, and you qualified and all this, and as long as there is no condition that you'll pay him, then it's okay. He's doing you a favor. And after he get, let's say he does the service and he gets you the job, if you choose to reward him, that is okay as well. Yeah, any appreciation. Give him a gift out of appreciation. But if he puts it as a condition in the beginning, from the beginning, then that is a problem and that is uh, not permissible. There's a hadith Hassan. قُلْ نَبِيَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَنْ شَفَعَ لِأَخِيهِ شَفَاعَةً فَأُهْدِيَ لَهُ هَدِيَةً فَقَدْ أَتَى بَابًا عَظِيمًا مِنْ أَبْوَابِ الرِّبَاعِ Whoever intercedes for his brother with the condition to get a gift, then indeed he has dealt with riba, great deal of riba, of usury. So, very important. قُلْ مُؤَلِّفْ هي أن يقول من رد لقطتي أو ضالتي أو بنى لي هذا الحائط فله ذات كذا That is the definition as we said the example. Then he said, وَلَوْ الْتَقَطَ اللُّقَطَ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَبْلُغُهُ الْجُعْلِ لَمْ يَسْتَحِقْ يعني, we give the example if he volunteers to, uh, يعني, he, the person who lost his wallet, for example, didn't ask. But this guy knows about it, so he volunteered, and he finds it, he's not entitled to get rewarded. Also, if the person did not hear about it, يعني, I came to, to, to you, the group of you, and I said, for you, whoever finds my wallet, I'll give him a hundred dollars or whatever. Someone I did not address or someone who did not know about it. Okay? Heard that I lost my wallet and started looking for it, still not in time. All right? Not in time. <coughs> uh, so, when it comes to uh, any summary of the questions and summary of a lot of these issues, but the coupons and competitions and all that, when can I get involved, when I cannot, when it's haram, when it's halal. Qa'ida is very simple. Imma saliman wa imma ghaniman. If the competition that you're going to get involved with, if the end result, either you will not gain anything or you will not lose anything, or you will gain, then it's okay. If you're going to gain or lose, then it's how. Again. You're not going to lose anything or gain anything. Or gain, it's okay. Meaning, as long as I don't have to pay for the ticket, that means I'm not going to lose anything. Uh, maybe I won't gain anything and maybe I will gain. That's okay. But imma ghaniman aw gharima, maybe I'm going to lose, and that is whatever I pay for it. Or gharima, lose that, gharima, or ghanima, or win. So when the thing is between either winning or losing, there is nothing in between, then it's haram. 
and that is gambling. That is what gambling is. Maysar is this. You get involved, you either lose or win. And if you win, someone will lose. And if you lose, someone will win. That's gambling. But if there's a chance that everyone might not win, everyone might not get anything, some might, but the others will not lose, then that is okay. Right? So next time you get involved, just ask yourself this. Is there a chance I'm going to win? Yes. Is there a chance I'm not going to win anything? Yes. Is there a chance I'm going to lose? Yes. Then it's one. Yeah. Is there a chance I'm going to win? Yes. Is there a chance I'm going to lose? No. Is there a chance I won't do win or lose? Yes. All right? So we stop here, inshallah, and we uh, continue next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.